What is going on friends, Sam Prentice here back with a comparison video. In fact, it's the AnyCubic range we're looking at today. We're looking at the AnyCubic Go versus the AnyCubic Neo. These are both Cobra range printers from AnyCubic's brand new lineup. You are watching a master at work. Today's video is sponsored by the wonderful PCBWay.com and I've recently got a message from them. Hey Sam, good news to share. Our big Christmas sale activity has just gone online. Welcome to share with all your friends and viewers. So make sure you check out PCBWay.com in the links below. The Cobra range from AnyCubic has been a welcome change to budget-friendly printers, getting the finesse of a styled printer alongside auto bed levelling and flexible beds for easily removable parts. Both the AnyCubic Go and Neo have the build volume of 220 x 220 x 250, a 2.4-inch LCD screen, with the heat settings maxing out at 260 on the hot end and 110 on the bed. The only key difference between the two is how the filament is fed into the hot end. The Go is a Bowden style, while the Neo is a direct drive. The advantages of either system tend to be around speed and, well, printing flexible filaments. But in all fairness, at the speeds that the Cobra runs at, which is generally less than 100 millimeters per second, there isn't much in it. The way I like to look at it is basically these being similar to a car. The Go is a rear wheel drive version and it's pushing the material where the Neo is pulling and is basically the front wheel drive version. You can clearly see on the Neo that the print head enclosure is large compared to the Go. That is because the motor is inside that enclosure. The systematics, in my opinion, on which is better, Bowden or direct drive, in the machines of this size, there's very little in it. And really, if you just want to print flexible filaments slightly faster, then the Neo certainly would be the better machine. However, the argument on which is really better only really makes a difference in machines that you're looking to push the speed limits where the flow rates are able to keep up with the achievable speeds without an obvious bottleneck in printers that are basically core XY or deltas mainly. Now other direct drive advantages are better extrusion, faster attraction, smaller lighter motors and a wider range of compatible filaments. While over on the Bowden, less weight on the print head equaling less moving mass, clean movements, increased print speed and better looking prints due to reduced vibrations. Uh, uh, so, so which one's better? So my personal preference is direct drive. And in my experience, pushing the filament down, as in the Bowden style, into the heated chamber has caused more headaches than it's solved. He said an unpopular opinion. Yes, I did, and I'm sticking by it. Anyway, price is what you pay and value is what you get, right? So for that extra 30 or $40 or pounds if you're in the motherland, on the Neo you get a double textured PIE sheet on the bed, a direct drive system, and well, that's it. Now at the time when AnyCubic actually released these two printers, and I think it was about two weeks apart from each other, it did seem really strange that they just didn't give people the option to pick direct drive or Bowden at that particular point, rather than basically creating two different machines. Um, giving people the flexibility to have a kind of almost kit-esque 3D printer is kind of part and parcel to this. And I've seen a lot of people saying online, hey, now I've got the go, can I not just upgrade the hot end? And to be honest with you, everything is the same. There's no reason why you couldn't do that. But I don't see at this point any cubic are going to be offering that kind of solution at this point in time. So let's talk for a second about the printers and print quality. Now, the Neo printer I've been using wholeheartedly for, I guess, about six to eight weeks now. No problems at all. It's printed flawlessly. But I did put the go on as well today, as you've seen in those videos, and I printed out some abomination prints. Uh, these things are dreadful. And the reason... <laughs> Let me show you first. Okay, so this is uh, this was on the go uh, hopefully you guys can see that. Let me just put uh, my hand behind here. Hopefully you can see that print. There we go. Um, that is, uh, that's not, not a great print at all. Um, lots of uh, over extrusion, uh, which is pretty poor. And this actually, I've broken part of it as well. This was on the, the Neo. Um, it's a fairly, fairly ugly print as well. Uh, also, uh, these, again, same colours for each of those printers. Again, fairly innocuous, uh, nasty prints. Now, at the moment, I have got these two printing. And then the reason that I had the problems, and this is, I think, nine times out of ten, when people say, oh, it won't print, and this won't work, and that won't work, it's going to be down to your slicer. Now, this is printing via Super Slicer at the moment. So you've got Cura, you've got Super Slicer, you've got Prusa Slicer, you've got a bunch of different slicers out there that you could potentially be using. Uh, my preference is Super Slicer for these particular printers. And again, you can just download the Ender 3 version. Uh, 
by Creality, <laughs> unfortunately, one of their competitors. But um, it does work really, really well. And hopefully by the end of this video, these will all be printed and I'll be able to show you how immaculate these prints are. So a uh, bit awkward there. Sorry about that. OK, so if you are in the UK, the Anycubic Cobra Go is currently on Amazon for $199, which probably isn't that much of a bad price. They've got six left in stock. Um, they don't have, unfortunately, the Neo in stock at the moment, um, as you can see. You can see the difference with the... Uh, in fact... Yeah, OK, there's the Neo. There's the Go. OK, fair enough. 199 Fair enough. OK. So um, if you head over to any Cubic website, though, you do get $10 off your first order with them. And on here, uh, under the Cyber Monday thing, um, obviously we're past Monday now, it's the 3rd of December, um, you can get this for $189. Now, if I change this to uh, pounds, it's 209 uh, shipping to the UK. Um, so 209 take away whatever that's going to be. Uh, the other thing, looking at the Cobra Neo, again, so we got... 229 here and shipping to the UK is 262 apparently. So um, if you're in the US, it is a bit of a deal. Um, 229 is actually a pretty good price for that printer. Direct drive, lots of really good features on that. And again, the PIE sheet is basically textured on both sides. So once again, it's going to be very much down to your personal preference. If it was down to my personal preference, it would certainly be the Anycubic Cobra Neo. However, saying that, one of my most favorite Anycubic Cobra printers is the Cobra Max. And that's ironic for a couple of reasons, including it being a Bowden setup. But mine has not failed me once, and I've tortured it pretty badly with some fairly large prints, including that four-piece giant octopus print that I recently finished. How to help somebody make a decision on what they should do, Cobra Go or Neo? So ultimately, it is going to be down to print quality and what materials you are printing. Uh, just not these ones. Good news, guys. The prints are now finished. And ironically, there was a knock at the door and Anycubic have also shipped me some more PLA filament. Don't forget to also check the filament that they have for sale out on their site as well. Let's have a look at the prints. So as before, guys, the green is the Go and the white is the Neo. As you can see, the prints are, in my opinion, certainly better than they once were, um, certainly with the uh, previous Cura profile. So Super Slicer has definitely vastly improved. But I have to give it to the Neo on this one. The print is pretty much immaculate. There's only two layer lines on this and 5% uh, on the infill. So there's no weird kind of line where the face is or anything like that. And the print is, as I say, pretty much immaculate um, for very minimal support that I actually added to the print. Incidentally, these are the Wexter Ewoks and I'll make sure that I put his uh, Patreon site down in the description as well. Again, these prints are using any cubic uh, filament, which again is PLA. But as you can see, the one on the left, which is the Go, there is a bit of kind of over and under extrusion. It's kind of a weird mix of kind of blends of issues that I'm getting from that. But again, the majority of these kind of faults will be down to tuning. So if I tune that in a little bit more, I'll probably get a slightly better result. The retraction element on the Neo seems to be a hell of a lot better kind of out the box, so to speak. So thank you very much, guys, for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, make sure you hit a little like there. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. So once again, guys, thank you very much for watching. If this video has helped you in some way, shape or form to make that informed decision on whether or not to go with the Go or to go with the Neo or to go with a completely different printer altogether, let me know in the comments below. If you've got any comments on this, any tips, any pointers that you want to share, also add them to the description below. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye for now. You are watching a master at work.